Hi mama, thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today I'm gonna to be talking about six things that I wish I had known when I was in the process of doing EC with my daughter who is contact napping and nursing right now. So I'm just gonna film this video like this, very real life mom stuff. And, uh, and we've wrapped up and EC was a thousand percent worth it, but I definitely think that I would have benefited from knowing some of the things I'm gonna share with you especially numbers five and six, I really got stressed out about. Um, so I hope you'll stay tuned for those. So the first thing that I would say is that it absolutely doesn't matter when you start. So if you didn't get a chance to start EC from birth, you know, maybe you were just really overwhelmed, you were healing, it just felt like too much. I totally get it. And that was true for me too. We didn't start EC until like three or four months. And I know some people start even later than that. I would not stress out thinking that somehow it is, is going to limit you, that it's going to mean you're going to get out of daytime diapers later, or that EC isn't going to go as well for you. For me, I really felt like EC was more about getting into a rhythm of just having potty be part of parenting. And it was about having another toolkit as a parent, another way to meet my daughter's needs. Um, it was really good practice for me. And a lot of it was exposure for her. So the toilet just, you know, wasn't a big deal as she's gotten older because it's just something that we've always done. Um, so definitely don't stress out if you are concerned that, you know, you're coming at EC too late. Um, the only thing I would say from what I understand, I followed Andrea Olson's um, Go Diaper Free program and she does a cutoff at 18 months that prior to that is EC and after that is more like potty training. So that might be something to look into. Um, but in general, I would say that EC can be worthwhile um, at whatever stage you start with your baby. Number two is that the goal is not to catch everything. <laughs> I, when I first started EC, I hadn't done a whole lot of reading and I didn't realize that this wasn't the thing. <laughs> I come from a, a dog background. I've had a lot of dogs. And if you've ever potty trained or house trained a puppy, you know, the goal is like that they never have accidents in the house. You do everything you can. You keep them on a leash. You keep them in a crate to keep them from having any kind of miss in the house so that they're not learning sort of the wrong thing. And so I kind of took that mentality when I started EC except that my baby was peeing every 20 minutes. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is not sustainable. How does anyone do this and catch everything? And then I, you know, read up a little bit more on EC and realized, oh, you're not supposed to catch everything. That's not the goal. It's gonna stress you out. It's gonna stress your baby out. And so if that's where you are, take a deep breath. Um, it doesn't make you better at EC uh, that you catch 50% versus 20% versus 1%. Um, what we did was we kind of focused on transition times. So getting in and out of the stroller, car seat, baby carrier, waking up from a nap um, after meals, whether that was solids or uh, breastfeeding and diaper changes. Those were kind of the big ones that we focused on and then if she happened to present some cues that i thought might be a need to go potty i would also offer the potty then um, and we followed those pretty loosely there are plenty of times that she woke up from a, a contact nap and it was just really sweet and lovely and i didn't want to rush to go into the bathroom and strip her diaper off and we just sat and cuddled and instead she went in her diaper and it was fine. Um, but that was kind of what we stuck to and it worked out just fine. Number three, progress is not linear. And you would think I would know this as an adult because in life, progress is not linear either. But I think at some point I just got really confident and excited that we were having such good success and thought, oh, it'll continue to just progress like this. And I got hit with some hard parenting reality around eight, nine, 10 months where we hit some pretty intense potty resistance. And I'm gonna share in a second how we resolve that. But um, if you are in a position where things are going really well, hooray, congrats, that's awesome, keep at it. Um, and then just keep in mind that if things change, it doesn't mean that you did anything wrong, that there are strategies and ways that you can adjust things so that you can get back on track if you feel like you've gotten off track. 
And if you feel like things aren't going super well and you're like, this is super frustrating, uh, if you need to step back, it's always fine to step back and take a little break for a few days. Much better, I think, than bringing angry or stressed energy to EC. Uh, but, you know, things will change again as well for you. And you can see improvement in later weeks and months if you stick with it. And maybe there's just a little bit of tweaking that you need to do. Which leads me to my next point, um, number four, which for us, I found that when things weren't going super well, when we were having resistance, there were two solutions. One was more privacy and the other was more independence. So the privacy thing for my daughter really kicked in hard at like, I wanna say close to eight months. And I was not comfortable just leaving her to sit on the potty reducer on the toilet. I was really concerned about her falling, hitting the shower, falling on the floor. So what ended up solving that for us was bringing out the mini potty. Andrea Olson sells a little plastic potty that sits on the ground. It was much safer for her to sit if she you know, fell over, it wasn't as big of a deal. But it gave me a lot of peace of mind that I could set her there and then just step outside the bathroom, give her a minute or two to just feel alone, to relax, to let things happen naturally instead of having me standing there kind of hovering. I realized that was a big detractor for my daughter at that stage. And then later on, as she got to be um, past a year, really struggled again with the toilet and I realized that she was wanting more independence. She was wanting to be part of the process. And so helping her wipe herself, you know, giving her a wad of toilet paper to kind of dab herself, having her help me dump the potty into the toilet, having her help me flush it, all of that kind of gamified going potty. It made it um, a game that she could participate in. She was much more excited about going potty once we started incorporating those things. So privacy and independence, big um, game changers for us. Number five, ditching daytime diapers means different things to different people. And I would say that if you find that you are subconsciously kind of hanging your hat on this idea that you're going to ditch daytime diapers at a certain point, really think about what you're expecting or hoping that to look like. And then get some feedback from the EC community about how things evolve for people. Um, I realized that I, my expectation of what ditching daytime diapers meant was very different from what a lot of people ended up declaring as their end, end point with EC. In my mind, I thought ditching daytime diapers meant that you pack up all your cloth diapers, in my case, because we're doing cloth, that you packed up all the cloth diapers, put them in storage because you were no longer going to need them and all you were gonna do is have your kid wear underwear and pants. And that is not how um, a lot of other moms that I talk to online, Facebook, Reddit, online coaching calls, what have you, actually lived and experienced. Uh, for some moms, they ditched daytime diapers not because they were catching everything in the toilet, but more so that they were just tired of buying disposables. And so they just decided arbitrarily, like I am officially done spending money on disposables. And instead they dealt with a number of misses on the floor or in clothing. Um, other folks were done with daytime diapers because they didn't want to do diaper laundry anymore. Um, where I was getting hung up is I thought, well, you know, my daughter is having you know, I would say at about 15, 16, 17 months, closer to the 18 month mark, we were pretty consistent with EC, but I would say we'd had about three or four misses every day. And so in my mind, I'm like, well, I'm not gonna ditch daytime diapers and declare us done because whether it's clothing or diapers, I'm still washing the same three or four, you know, peepeed outfits or diapers either way. So does it matter if it's diapers versus clothing? Um, I'm going to get more into the, the, the weeds with this in a different video, but I just wanted to kind of put out there this idea that what that benchmark looks like is different for different families. And so if you find yourself getting caught in 
a comparison game or just a little uh, feeling insecure or unsure that you know things aren't progressing like they're quote unquote supposed to which is kind of what I went through a little bit it does help to kind of know that it's different for everybody in terms of how they're defining getting out of daytime diapers and I would say just if you're like me where you are defining ditching daytime diapers as being primarily miss free or accident free however you want to define it um, most days for us that happens closer to 20 months and from talking to other moms it seems like that was pretty rare prior to 12 months there were a few moms I talked to that were able to achieve that around 15 months and then I would say I talked to a few moms where that was more of the case around 18 19 20 months and some even later at like 24 months um, so huge range there and so that kind of ties into number six which is that you know don't freak out about that 18 month kind of cut off so if you're trying to figure out like can someone please give me any kind of number about when this happens I know a lot of the messaging and the, uh, the content online is around walking but I would say give yourself and give your baby an even longer grace period beyond walking um, just because I found for us there was a lot of motor development and concentration that really needed to kind of evolve for for my kiddo anyway i'm for hoping that. that those six points are helpful for you i'm losing my daylight here and she's still passed out but if you have any questions don't hesitate to leave me a comment i do check the comments and uh, hopefully i will see you in the next video thank you so much for watching good luck with your ec journey and congratulations on your baby take care Bye bye